Hey guys and welcome back to our Breeze series. Today we are going to discover some of the features that our designer tool has that will help you prototype a project. You also might be wondering what you are currently looking at if you are new here. We made a magnificent game project called Breeze and introduced some parts and pieces of Breeze to you in the live streams. You play as a small robot dropped somewhere on a low poly island. You're trying to find fuel to fill up your rocket and return from your vacation. During our original stream event on Twitch, each and one of the mechanics of the game were introduced one at a time, including some commentary from our resident developer experts at Crytek, who usually work on our own games. Now we are bringing you all of that and much much more, as we are adding more step-by-step -step tutorials to the mix enabling you to create your own island filled with beautiful low-poly assets and some platforming game mechanics you can enjoy. In this video, I will present you the designer tool, also known as CryDesigner, which comes in handy when prototyping your levels. Although I will keep it very simple in this case, but I will link you information here and there right in the right corner of the video for more in-depth tutorials on the designer tool. You can easily create complex meshes with the powerful built-in functionality without the need for any external DCC tools, but we will focus on rather simple creations this time. We will go through some of the forms and use cases you might want to use the designer tool for. We will build a small house and a platforming situation. We will need something simple, so the player can have this aha moment later. We will create a building for which you will need a key to enter. The key seems to be lying around somewhere near our building. This is a good way to introduce a game mechanic. We can then later use in a slightly more complex way. But this is all imaginary for now, no real code or visual script involved yet. Let's start with the key, make sure you have a bit of space. Our workspace should rather help us to create than prevent us from creating. And you also might need to find the designer tool first, and open it somewhere where it fits your needs, and comes in handy when you work on your prototypes. Head over to the tools tab, and go down to the designer tool, and click on the modeling tool. Okay, so now you can either leave it where it is or you can move it around. You can attach it to your asset browser, for example, or you can move it wherever you want it to be. For our key, we would need a simple cylinder shape. Click on the cylinder icon, move your mouse to the viewport and click once. Now you will notice something. You can move around the mouse and the size of the cylinder will change. Well, to be exact, the radius will change. As soon as you have your desired radius, you can click once more. Now you will notice you can decide the height of your cylinder. But before you can click again and you finally lock the height, look at the settings of the cylinder. You might notice something interesting and useful here. The first setting you might notice is the enable magnet button. When enabled, the cursor will snap the vertices and edges on the shape making it easier to align to the shape you are drawing to the already existing shape. But this is not really important to us for now. But the second one is. The subdivision count gives you the number of polygons the radius of the shape is divided into. The higher the subdivision count, the smoother the cylinder will be. But it will also come with a price of performance. So be careful here, you can choose any number you want to. I will stick with something between 26 and 32. The radius and the height are already self-explanatory. And it makes sense, right? 90 degree snap makes the corner of the object closest to the cursor snap to the Y or X axis, causing the object to be at 90 degree angle to the axis. Useful to make sure objects are oriented in the same direction. I've linked more of the settings and their explanation down in the video description box. Let's continue to create our key. Remember guys, we are prototyping here and not doing actual modeling like you would when you would use Blender or 3ds Max, but you are still able to create rather complex meshes with the designer tool. It's just not our current goal right now. For example, you could learn how to create a bridge with CryEngine in this tutorial right here, also linked in the video description down below. Ok, let's continue with our key. So a key might have a hole, am I right? Which means we need to have an offset right in the middle of the key. 
Use the extrude tool called offset. You can make an offset right in the middle of a polygon easily by selecting it and then clicking left mouse button again. Let's do this. Okay, this looks fine and now we could use a hole inside it. How would we do it? You might be thinking of deleting polygons, but there is a better way. I would use the extrude tool for it. This tool provides a powerful function to push or pull the selected face, so you can expand a 2D surface to a 3D shape. So talking about push, let's click the extrude button and then click on our circle. And now push it inside the cylinder. I know this might sound weird, but just do it. Push it inside while holding the left mouse button and then let go. Cool, let's continue creating the key. We would need to use the base for our key. For that we could simply use an additional box, but that's not necessary. We could use a polygon that our cylinder already has. We can extrude one of the polygons, choose a side polygon and start extruding it. But not too far, we want to make it realistic, right? But again, that's up to your imagination. I want to keep it realistic. And again, we are not done yet. We need to separate a few polygons here. Switch to the Tools tab and click on the Loop Cut feature. The Loop Cut tool can be used for cutting polygons by several loop edges in an intuitive way. But remember that this tool is only available for quad-shaped polygons, which we luckily have. Click on the tool and choose a portion of the key to separate it. Choose an axis to cut it and click left mouse button. Now you can drag the loop cut tool and as soon as you have your position, let the mouse go and click again. Now repeat it until you have something logical that you can then extrude. That means, well, just follow my lead here. And as soon as you have the extrudes that you need for the key, Switch back to the extrude tool and then extrude the cuts you just made. And as soon as it looks like what I just did, you are done. That's the key. Congrats by the way, but to be able to use this key, as a game mechanic you'll need to export it as a CGF. And in general, if you would need to export your objects to make them normal game objects in the asset browser, head over to this transform tab and click on export. Save the CGF object in your desired directory. And now you have this object as a CGF, which you then can use as a component or an entity. So we have the key, but what's missing? Well, you guessed it, the building. We should start with a box here. It works the same way as the cylinder. Click on the box icon. Now click on the viewport and drag the box to decide the width and again with your second click you decide the height of the box. Now for our house or building we would need a door and a few windows maybe. Loop cut tool and the extrude tool are your best friends right now. But before we can do that we need to create the interior of the building. Just follow my steps as you see them in the video. Create an offset on top of the box. Now drag the offset you created a little bit down, not too much, we don't want to delete it. Remember dragging something down is done with the extrude tool. Or let's put that into a better wording, extruding an offset inwards will delete the polygon and the filled space we don't need, but we don't want that here, we just want to create the interior of our building. Now we also need to cheat a little bit, extrude one of the edges on top of the building, just like I do. What we can do now is choosing a side here and extrude it outwards to close the gap or empty space to create a roof. And voila, we get our roof back with an interior of the building. Let's continue with the doors and windows. You'll see me speed cutting here. You see me speed cutting the meshes, but again there are a few more ways to do this. You might want to watch this video up here to get a better understanding of the designer tool with a really good tutorial. In a matter of fact, there are multiple videos linked in the video description down below that will help you create awesome art and prototypes with the designer tool. And that's it. We have our building now. It might be not perfect, but that's our building we built with a lot of love. We later can use this as a prototype. Like you see here in this case, for example, and for example, 
We could use the key that we previously created to open the doors. We haven't built yet, but you get the idea. And now imagine we have a chest inside that building, which we will desperately need to open. There might be treasures inside, or the one thing that we actually need. The fuel can I mentioned earlier, remember? Let's build one really quick. Create a simple box inside the house, but take the top of the box and extrude it a bit. Not too much, just follow me here. And now pick the polygon icon and choose the top we just extruded. Press the number 3 on your keyboard, so we can change the size and make the polygon a bit smaller. This looks good as the top of a chest, but we could use some magic here, right? Head over to the tools tab and choose the bevel tool. A bevel tool there is to smooth the edges of any shape. So as soon as you clicked on the bevel tool, move the mouse around in your viewport. You should be able to see and choose the amount of polys to have a rather smooth top, but do not overdo it. Click again and then you will have to make a decision again on how many polygons you want to have. Again, do not overdo it. Make a small smooth step. Remember it comes with a price of performance. And now we have a chest with a fuel can inside. But we need to create more game mechanics here. But before we do that again, there is a video you can see right now, which will help you to create a smoother surface with the designer tool. So check it out. Okay, we got the chest with the fuel can inside, but we need to open the chest, right? Imagine the key for this chest is on top of the building we just built. We need to create some help to get us up on the top of the building and to get the key to open the chest. And maybe, just maybe, it's not rather this tiny building, but it's a tall one. We have to do some work to get up there, so we need to increase the height of the roof. And this is where the designer tool shines in my opinion. You don't need to switch to different tools like Blender and 3ds Max, Edit and Reimport, everything to change just one small thing. You just simply expand on what you already have, or decrease. It's so easy to use to work with, but I'm, I'm fanboying here, let's get back to the tutorial. So we increase the size of the building and put the key on top of the roof. We can now either create new mechanics, or we again just expand on what we have. And what we have here is a building with polygons, a lot of them. Or at least I will create a lot of them now, while you are watching using loop cut tool. There are other tools that can be used to create multiple cuts to a mesh, but I just like to use loop cut here. If you want to know more, again, video description, check it out. So as you can see, I made a lot of cuts in our mesh, and now we can extrude some of the parts to make an actual platform out of it, which then we can jump on to get our key. We created the first one, which is fine. Let's give it a test right away to see if the height fits our gameplay. Can your player jump on top of it? Just test it. It seems to be working just right for me and even if it's not, I can change the results in seconds and adjust my object to my actual gameplay. Now continue to extrude all the platforms and test them until you reach the top of the roof. And that's how easy it is to create a tiny mechanic for your game prototype. We successfully created a key with the designer tool, learned how to do simple modifications and even created a house. I would also recommend you guys to play around with the designer tool. You learn a lot from just having fun with it and I promise you, you will have a lot of fun. But if you would rather read the documentation on that topic, great, we, we got you covered. Check the info box and the pinned comment below this video. And I hope you enjoyed this episode guys. If you decide to create something with the designer tool after watching this video, please share your results with us. I would love to see your work on our official Discord server, Twitter, Facebook, you decide. All the links are as always down in the description box. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.